Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mune here. Today we're finishing our three-part videos uh, on the Arcane Bloodline. This is going to be our strength-based Elder Scion. Uh, this will be my quote-unquote final pick for it. Now that doesn't mean I won't do another video for Arcane Bloodline. I'm going to do an Illusionist build specifically because I said I would. That's going to be a little bit later because I'm going to do another um, uh, viewer requested build for a vivisectionist that someone wanted. That'll be the next video coming. Uh, what we have here is a strength-based character, Sylvan Human. Uh, I want to show you how we level it up, and again, I'll talk about the different feats and why we get them, the spells that we get them at the specific areas, or the specific levels that we grab them as well. Remember, while this is a strength-based build, and therefore any melee weapon you have any kind of skill in is fair game in my opinion. Yes, you can have two-handed weapons, you know, like quarter staffs, great swords, uh, bark ishes. Again, you're not going to really enjoy casting your spell and attacking, attacking, attacking. That doesn't mean you won't enjoy beating them to death with power attack on them. Remember, you get extra strength bonus because it's a two-handed wielder. Your power attack goes up as well because it's a two-handed wielder. So again, there's plenty of reasons to want to go two-handed. I'm not. And that doesn't mean I won't switch off to it. So again, if you find a, a badass weapon, feel free to keep it. Uh, I will actually switch off to a scimitar in this build, mostly because of the picture, but also because it's a staple for a magus. Now, Rapiers are too, so are uh, Kukris. But those two weapons, the Rapiers and Simit or Kukris, are usually you know the weapon finessable kind, obviously, and therefore the deck space builds get those by and large. That doesn't mean you can't grab them, but Scimitar are something that can't use effectively. Strength based build can, and again, that's a reason for me to want it too. Plus, I know there's a, a number of decent Scimitars that are Magus specific type weapons. The, the bonuses that you get feel like they're made for a magi. So again, pretty solid choice. Uh, our character is human, we went strength 16, uh, intelligence of 12, charisma of 19, that's where my extra two point went in. Now that'll get five points total to a solid 24. Now on the Dexcon and the Wisdom, why did I not go 10, 10, and 10? That was already built into it, and it would have been fine. I wouldn't have any penalty here, but I remembered that our character actually has this wonderful little pet familiar that we can get, a centipede familiar, plus two to will saves and a plus two to perception. That basically negates this penalty for me. Yes, it's a penalty to my lower skills, but I'm not using those anyway, so who cares? So it neuters this, and by doing this, it gives me more dex, more con. What did that give me? A point in the extra reflex, a point in extra fortitude. So again, while this went down to each of these went up one, and I get more armor, and I get more hit points, and my dex based skills are better. So again, there's plenty of reasons for me to like doing this. It's not amazing, but I still say it's a solid, solid choice. From here, for my two feats that I picked up at level one, remember I am human, and as such I get two feats, I went spell focus evocation, so you have a bonus to your evocation spells right off the bat. Also went spell specialization right off the bat, so that I can actually do more damage or have more beams or whatever uh, bonus to my evocation spells would be for being two caster levels higher. In most cases, it really is nothing more than more damage. But in some cases, it's more duration to the spell. But again, a solid, solid choice in my opinion. We're going to take this not only as a strength-based build, we will get things like Cornigan Smash, Shatter Defenses, Dreadful Carnage, Dazzling Display, and again, Weapon Focus in their Weapon of Choice, the Scimitar. So that's still locked in. It's going to be spread around a little more than you're probably used to. Instead of grabbing those as soon as you can, we will defer some things. Why? So we can get our Meta Magics in, so we can get our Greater Spell Focus Evocation in. And the ones that are going to be coming at the very tail end, just to, to jump to the punchline, those really will be our elemental focus fire here and greater elemental focus fire here. Why so late? Remember, you already fire evoker. Why not have those sooner than later? Again, there's nothing wrong with pushing something back and grabbing those sooner. I'm not going to tell you not to. However, the fire spells that we have, uh, with the exception of tar pool, for the ones that I have on my list, the exception of Tarpool, they're all evocation spells, so it makes more sense to not only get spell focus and greater spell focus sooner, then work into elemental focus and greater elemental focus. Well, that's part of the reason why they're late. The reason that they're last is because, again, I don't get Tarpool until 19. So, again, I can have things like elemental focus and greater elemental focus kind of lagging behind because it's not benefiting that spell until 19 anyway. Yes, it would benefit all my other fire spells, sure, but I want to be able to swing a weapon solidly set myself up for the, all that sneak attack loving that we're going to get. So that's my logic there. So let's actually get into this build, shall we? Uh, for my first two spell picks, you should know that of course I went Shocking Grasp and Shield Stable Spells for Magus. And again, 
we will see more of that as we progress on. Of two, I'm going to recommend your first fire spell because it's AOE. So we're going to grab some perception, use magic device, and unlock mobility. Now, before we get crazy here, let's actually talk about what your skills will actually end on by level 20. So I'm going to have athletics up to four here for the, how many points I invest. Four athletics. Uh, I'm going to have mobility to three, so when you fight defensively, you can get a plus one to your armor class. I will actually even invest in trickery, six points, because again, with a little bit of dex, as well as some bonuses besides, trickery won't be that bad. And again, if you eke out a little more extra XP for yourself as you're leveling up with your team, why not? I would obviously shut XP share off so that you can do that early on. We're not going to invest anything in stealth, uh, but we put 11 points in Knowledge Arcana, one point knowledge world, and that's kind of a judgment call. That's just to unlock it. If you don't feel that, feel free to take it and recycle it into trickery. You could use some extra love. Uh, we are going to, of course, maximize perception over here at 20. We are also going to have enough points that we can actually maximize persuasion at 20. And that's going to be a solid plus 30 here by the end of the build. Then it's going to be really, really nice for you. And I'll use magic device. We're only going to invest five points in it, but again, it'll finish with a solid plus 15 for the total. So. It'll be a solid, solid build, in my opinion. From here, spell specializations, if giving you your choices. Downside on this, just so we're clear, and I kept talking in my previous builds about how maybe it'd be nice to finish at level 20 with Icy Prison being one of your choices. Remember, it is an evocation spell. I keep forgetting that if they're free spell picks here, 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 or the six that you get there, they're not on this list ever, ever, ever. If you could have gotten them anyway, like Burning Hands, let's say I don't pick it now, but I grab it here for free for whatever silly reason, it would still be on the list, obviously. So that's not changing anything. But those free ones, the ones that are hidden behind the wall of uh, free spell picks, never make the list. And that's kind of a shame, because there's some really good ones in there. But it's okay. Uh, I'm going to grab Burning Hands, though, now, uh, even though Shocking Grass could definitely use some extra love and still. This is a UE version. And again, having this now at level 2, remember that this one does 1d4 of fire damage per caster level. So, if you ever forget, by the way, you can click this up here. When you pick one, it'll give you the information. So just right-click it, and it tells you roughly what the spell does. It doesn't give you all the information, which is kind of a shame, quite frankly, but at least it's there. But this solid uh, 1d4 of damage is 2d4 right now. With a spell specialization, it jumps up now to 4d4, so it's almost maxed out already. So that's not bad. And again, for an AoE attack that does 4 to 16 points of damage, that can come in super handy. So just saying, remember, it's also an evocation spell, and we already have a bonus to our evocation spells. So again, something that's pretty interesting to me. So level one, again, obviously to get any benefit from it, you must actually invest in grabbing the spell. So here's Burning Hands. Keep going. Level three now. Remember, we're getting a bit of a concentration bonus. Uh, perception. I'm um, going to unlock Trickery now. Uh, matter of fact, I'll even put another point in it. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to put as many points in it as I can to get it up to where it needs to be and be done with it. Uh, from here, uh, I'm going to invest at level 3. We're going to grab our first weapon, our first and only weapon focus, and then again, like I said, that's going to be Scimitar. You can do what you want. If you don't like that, go Reaper, go Kukri, go Quarterstaff. There's nothing wrong with that. Why do I say Quarterstaff? You are a strength-based character, and I am grabbing Wand Wielder. So again, we can Wand slash Quarterstaff wield, which is pretty useful for this build. For here, spell specialization again. You could say burning hands again, going from three to five, it'll cap out. There's nothing wrong with that choice. Notice that we get magic missile for free here, though. And again, at level three, you get two missiles. At level five, which would be if I were to click this, I could be considered level five. Now that's three missiles. Again, is that worth doing over something like burning hands? Because again, 4d4 of damage uh, now goes to 5d4 of damage, max out. Uh, it's kind of odd on this one. I do, I must admit, I do like auto-hit moves, and again, if you can fire that off, three missiles uh, that are guaranteed to hit as long as you catch them before he casts that shield spell on himself, that's a big whooping on a target, even if, worst case scenario, they do two points of damage apiece, times three, that's six points of damage, that's going to take out several dudes at level three, just saying, that's not that bad, uh, and again, the chances you'll ro roll a two, a two, and a two is pretty slim, so, not bad. I'll actually put it in Magic Missile. But again, if you're feeling Burning Hands, hey man, rock it. There's nothing wrong with it. And again, why not? Because again, you will capitalize on that DC check. So, it's kind of nice. But I'll give Magic Missile. Level 1. I'm going to now grab uh, Expeditious Retreat. So I can do that kiting maneuver. 
this is not a solo build per se. I would say that you could probably do this solo build if you went dex based. At least for a while, you probably wouldn't finish the game easily with it, but you could probably get away with it, I think. Uh, for this build, definitely not. Our dex is nothing to write home about, and again, while it's 12 and it's helpful, it's not amazing. Um, but I can use a bow, and I can you know, kite with a nice composite bow with a, a 16 strength. I'll do an extra plus 3 damage. This spell alone will allow me solo to take on most of that one map we've already talked about. Extremely helpful. So again, I'll happily do that, go from 3 to 4, 4 to 5. And again, I have trickery, I have mobility, I have athletics. They're not amazing, but they're high enough that I can scum save quite a bit of that stuff and go from 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 without a team pretty safely in that area. Bring the team later when you need to clear out the wolves and the, the big bad and you know, maybe the main boss fights, but by and, and of course to pack out the gear. But by and large, this is a way for me to get a level or two ahead of my team. Going on. Charisma always are the points you're investing in here. Put that perception up. And I'm going to put a few in persuasion, or two in persuasion, excuse me. Why? Because at level 6... Uh, or sorry, level 7, we're going to actually grab ourselves Cornigan Smash, and to do that you need 6 in Persuasion. So this really does need to get a little more love. From here, now you notice we've unlocked level 2 spells, as you can see, things like Scorching Ray. Now again, the question is, is, is it worth grabbing? Again, right click it and it tells you, at 3rd level you get a beam, every 4 levels beyond it you get another beam. So we really need to be level 7. Well, 4 plus 2 is 6, so this doesn't do us any good. So don't bother. Again, that's fine. So, you know, keep it in Magic Missile. Burning Hands is already uh, a, a stone's throw away from being maxed out anyway, so I wouldn't waste it in there. I'd happily put it in Magic Missile at this point, so that it's level 6. That's, again, level 1, you get 1 missile. Level 3, you get 2. 5 is 3. 7 is 4. And then 9 is where it caps out. It finishes off with the your full 5 missiles per casting. So, again, this does still benefit us. It takes us from 2 missiles to 3 missiles, at least. So that's something. For here, Blur and Frigid Touch are still staples. Remember, you are Magus. So just because you like Ray spells and Scorching Ray and such like that, there's no bonus to it yet anyway. Feel free to grab the ones that you know you're going to channel through your weapon. Going Magus. Perception. And I'm going to put that Persuasion up to 5 so I don't forget. A little more in a trickery because, again, it never hurts to have a little bit more in there. Now, level 5. This is where we get uh, our first Meta Magic. And this one is on you. I'm going to give you a choice. Uh, our choices, of course, are going to be reach, heighten, or sorry, excuse me, reach, uh, extend, or empower. Now, note that you are casting level 2 spells now. You are literally two levels away from casting level 3. So empower would be really a bad idea. You can't use it yet. A level 1 spell would be considered level 3. You can't cast them yet. For two more levels, you can't do that. So there's no point. So your choices to me would be extend, or reach. Now again, I, I talked about Heighten. Heighten is awesome. It is a decent, decent pick. I'm not going to do it since we're going to get this beautiful buff plus one anyway to anything that's metamagic in any way, shape, or form from us um, as far as this is concerned. I'll happily go reach or extend. Now, you may say extend is a good choice. You know, get your buffs last longer. There's nothing wrong with that. Level one spell and level two spell of shield. Expeditious retreat is extremely useful. And again, many of our spells have duration on them. Our evocation spells, though, the ones that do damage, very few have extend. So again, a great spell for your buffs and your debuffs and then things like grease spell, whip spell, stuff like that, but not necessarily for attacking spells, which is what you're basically focused on. You are an evoker. Your job is to do damage. So empower, again, is a solid choice, but again, you can't really use it, so why would you do that? Well, many of your spells don't have full range including your evocation single target stuff, obviously. Uh, the AoE stuff, like Fireball, is already at long range. Lightning Bolt's a beam. You can't uh, reach those spells. But we're not at those spells yet anyway. Scorching Ray, on the other hand, you can reach that. Uh, our, our Cantrips, our Acid Splash, our Ray of Frost, and all those guys, you could reach them. But again, we can't put them in the spell book as far as this is concerned, so that doesn't do us any good. But things like our... Um, uh, melee touch attacks like Shocking Grasp and um, Corrosive Touch, which we didn't take, but Frigid Touch and, of course, Vampiric Touch, which is coming around the corner, you can reach those spells. You can shoot them at a distance. So, again, a lot more utility for this one than you think. Magic Missile can be reached. Grease Spell can be reached. I think even Web Spell falls in this category, but I could be mistaken. It could be that Web is only Extend, but still extremely useful in my opinion, and I think you'll like having Reach early on. Having said that, we could say, well, grab the next one here, 
that's kind of pushing it. And again, there's things we want to work towards. So if you really want to get to your corn against smash, you really need to have a uh, power attack. And we don't have that yet, so this is our chance to grab it. So here's power attack, here's meta magic reach, and then again for our spell specialization, remember now, Scorching Rays level 5 plus 2. Level 7 is 2 beams. Now it's useful to have it in Scorching Ray. Level 2, gotta get that Scorching Ray now so you can use it, right? Keep going. Magus. I have Perception, Persuasion. Now is happily at 6 where it needs to be for Cornigan Smash for level 7. So that's right where it needs to be. I'm gonna put a little bit and use Magic Device just because it's lounging behind just the tiniest bit. Uh, from here, let's grab ourselves a Enduring Blade because we still want to buff our weapon. Now, you may say, well, okay, now that you're level 6, I don't I, I need Scorching Ray. That's not true. To get that 2 beam still, it needs to be level 7 or higher. So we're at level 6, you're only getting 1 beam again. So again, if you grab Scorching Ray, again, you're considered level 8. That still only gives you 2 beams, but it's better than 1 beam. So I'm going to keep it in Scorching Ray. For our sub spell level 2 now, after Scorching Ray, we pick up Web for some crowd control loving. And again, it's already at long range, so you can't reach it, but that's still okay. And again, we didn't have a way to in enhance it in any way really yet anyway. But we still have plenty of spells that we have the capability of increasing the range. Not the ones that are personal. Remember, you can't shoot those at a target. But if it's touch, uh, if it's like a, um, where is it at? A friendly creature within touch range, that's you or like your friend that you're standing next to, you can just touch him on the shoulder and blur him. Well, I could technically reach that spell at level 3, of course, casting. I could reach that, which means I could shoot it at a target, a friend of mine, obviously, at distance, close range, and therefore give him blur. So I don't have to get up in the mix of it. That's unrealistic. Why would you do that? But that just still gives me another casting of it. And again, just because I can shoot it at range doesn't mean I have to. I can still cast it on myself. So when I have access to level 3 spells, that's now still useful. See what I'm saying? going. Level 7, now we finally have medium armor, and since this is a deck based, or excuse me, a strength based build, you're definitely using the best armor that's available. I'm going to put a little more into trickery here. Uh, how much did I need in all the other 6? I'll finish it off. We're done with trickery now. And I'm going to start working a little bit on athletics and mobility while bringing up arcana and perception always. From here, level 7, now this is our chance for our Cornigan Smash there. Why it's not a thumbs up, I don't know. But it's definitely something you want. Now remember, because of your high, high persuasion that you're going to have on this build, remember, I'm taking persuasion all the way to 20. It's going to take a while to get there. We're building up all the other stuff, but we're steadily working on it. We're not slouchers by any stretch of the imagination. And you'll have the highest charisma that most people can have on a level 20 build. So again, this is going to be a solid, solid, a solid intimidation check. And again, you demoralize that guy. That's basically their feared it's anyone that I attack while I have power attack on. That's all I have to do is have that on, swing and hit a guy. They'll do, I will do, excuse me, a persuasion intimidation check against their DC check. And if I pass that, there's now shaken, according to, uh, uh, it's like a minus two to all kinds of stuff. Then, uh, it doesn't last very long. The, the better you are at intimidating, the longer it lasts. However, it's just so that I can set up when I finally get to like level 11 and I start grabbing things like shatter defenses that they're now flat-footed, and again, that's going to be amazing for us. For Spell Specialization, now you're level 7, so again, where's the next cutoff for the next beam? If I want Scorching Ray, the next one is at a level 11. What does that mean? That means it's not doing me any good because I'm considered level 9 right now. So don't put it in Scorching Ray. Grab Lightning Bolt. Why? Because we just unlocked level 3 spells, and again, we're grabbing Lightning Bolt. We are not grabbing Fireball. I know you're a fire guy. Not even yet, so I'm not worried. And I'm happy with grabbing lightning bolt. And then at level 10 on up, we'll start working on things like controlled fireball. So we're still okay. Um, but this is a solid, solid pick. And again, I, I couldn't pass up having damage at level 3 and level 5 for electric damage. This was really, really nice for us. So that's why we're grabbing it here. So first at level 1, after Expeditious Retreat, we're going to grab ourselves a Grease Spell. Again, nice crowd control ability, and again, you can reach that because there's a close range to it, which means now we can put that at level 2 with the reach meta magic, a plus 1 to its DC check, and it doesn't last longer, which is good news because I hate Grease Spell because it blocks our way, and you know, if we put it in like a corridor or something, 
our team is slippy slidey all over the damn place and having that last for like 20 30 minutes is really goddamn annoying but having it just shoot farther and have the duration not be affected that's not bad and i will happily put that in my spell book level three now we're working on lightning bolt as we said and this is a little different than normal instead of grabbing displacement and vampire touch we're grabbing lightning bolt and again i'm still grabbing vampire touch still a staple and again i still want it but now i have two different ways of hurting targets at level three single target for solid and plus bonus to my health or i could lick at an unholy damage by the way versus aoe electric damage where they have a reflex save but we still have a bonus to the dc check because we have spell focus and evocation okay, magus more charisma more perception Mobility's now finished athletics could use a little bit of more love Spell specialization, and at this point, remember, if you feel free to check it, always check it. It's level 8, so plus 2 is 10, and it's still not good enough for the third beam. And we still may not actually pick up that third beam, and they just let it naturally progress into it. It sucks, but it's what it is. I'm happy with 2, we've been happy with 2, and now we're doing solid AoE damage. So feel free to keep going with Lightning Bolt. And now Lightning Bolt, by the way, is a full at level 8 with its plus 2. It's giving the maximum 10d6 of damage, so that's pretty nice for us. Uh, for here at level 3, after Lightning Bolt, Dispel Magic and Vampire Touch shows up, we need to get some protection. So here's Displacement. Keep going. Magus, remember we're getting another bonus to our Concentration check at level 9, so now we're up to a plus 3. This is our first free spell pick, too. So let's get some Perception. Arcana's a little behind. I want uh, Athletics up a little bit more. We'll try to get that to 4 and finish it off before too long. From here, first grab your spell specialization. Uh, notice we haven't unlocked uh, level let's see, one, two, three, four, level four spells yet. So again, we're still on things like lightning bolt. Again, is it necessary? Well, nine goes to eleven, but you don't have eleven d six in lightning bolt. So you can leave it at nine like this now, and switch back now to scorching ray. Why? Because nine d six is close enough to ten d six. I don't think you'll notice, but having two beams go up to three beams, I think you will. So feel free to switch back to Scorching Ray now. And again, to keep it to 3, you have to keep it here at this level 9 and at level 10. And then you, maybe you won't want to do that. You'll we'll, we'll decide when you get there. For our new Arcana, you know what we're picking. It's level 9. It's the first chance we have to do sneak attack damage. And again, we do pretty decent with our beam spells. Another reason, by the way, I bumped my decks up to a 12 instead of leaving it at the crappy 10. Yeah, I felt more protection and more hit points was warranted versus more willpower. Sue me. But I did like the, the fact that I'll be uh, more likely to hit with some of my race spells. So, pretty cool. Sense Vitals uh, is a staple now. And again, it had been nice to have uh, Meta Magic Extend so that you could increase that. Remember, that's a level 2 casting, if I'm not mistaken. So we have access to level 3 spells, so you could extend it. But we don't have that Meta Magic yet. But find a Meta Magic Rod. The, the, the lesser Meta Magic Extend Rods are good enough to buff that thing three times a day. That's solid, and again, you'll enjoy that. From here, uh, we're going to buff our weapons. So again, Enduring Blade, Ghost Blade, Bane Blade are still staples. For our feet pick, though, level 9, we are grabbing another Meta Magic. We are grabbing now Empower. Where are you at? Now you may say, why grab Empower instead of Extend? You just said that you could have Extend, and then you could double the duration of that. This is true. There's nothing wrong with this. However, you're getting into the higher casting level stuff. You're in level 3 now, where you can actually benefit from having Empower. So a level 1 spell can be a level 3 casting and get the full Empower benefit, and you can still cast it. And you're about to hit level 4, so that means your level 2 spells, say the Scorching Ray, could be Empowered, and you can cast Beams at level 4 that are Empowered versions of this spell. Just saying there's reasons to want it. So I'm going for Empower now because we want that damage. So remember, re uh, reach Meta Magic first, now in power. And again, if you feel like swapping those around to grab extend sooner than later, hey, that's fine. But you know you're going to grab all three. At level three, after displacement, we're going to grab ourselves a stinking cloud for some nice crowd control ability. Something that we can empower. We can't benefit from it yet, but something that we can empower, so it's still nice for us. Now you're casting level four spells proper. You're considered a fighter, not that we particularly care. Perception's going up. Athletics is finally finished. Let me check my sheet just to make sure. Yep, four, three, six. 
Is that right? Yes, and zero. Those are all done. These top ones here are finished as far as I'm concerned. So now it's working on persuasion, because remember, intimidation check is important. Work on arcana. Always work on perception and get use magic device a few more points still. Spell specialization for level 10. Now here's the point. And remember I said to get that third beam still, you'd have to invest in Scorching Ray again. You'd be considered level 12. That doesn't matter. You need to be at least a level 11 to get that third beam. So if you don't pick it now, you're back down to two. But what could you grab instead? Well, remember, you have access now to level four spells. The reason this is weird and feels wrong is because, remember, unlike a sorcerer who could benefit from this every two levels, remember, level two casting to level four spell, that's the next higher casting level. So this would be level two spells, level three spells, level four. We have to go three each time to get to the next level, which is why it's one, four, seven, ten. That's why stuff is coming at what you think is weird times. It is, but again, there's still reasons to want to in, uh, specialize in something like this. It's 10d6 uh, right now, but with a uh, weapon sp or, sorry, spell specialization in it, it can be actually at full damage at 12d6. Is that amazing? It's 2d6 of extra damage. AOE style, four different kinds of damage, acid or cold or electric or fire, so there's reasons to like it. But, again, if you're still back on the whole you like shooting beams, you probably want to stay in Scorching Ray, which I probably would do, quite frankly. Level 2, after Sense Vital shows up, I'll uh, see web, and now we're down to uh, your choice. So either, because uh, we've got two more picks to go, you're either going to grab Mirror Image now, or you're going to grab Acid Arrow now, and I know me, Mirror Image is amazing, but I honestly think I, I would benefit more at early levels with Acid Arrow. Uh, that's just on you to make that decision, but I still like that spell, and remember, you can't reach that spell, we can empower it, and again, we can extend it, we don't have that yet, but we can extend it, so that's going to come before too long. Level 4, remember Dimension Door is free, so don't pick it. Dragon's Breath, on the other hand, was something that was a solid pick, and even if you didn't spell specialize it, you still want this first. From there, though, after Dragon's Breath, remember we have uh, recently acquired Sense Vitals just a level ago. So you definitely want to be able to be invisible, right? So make sure that you grab yourself some of that greater invisibility. So now between those two spells, you can set up your own sneak attack damage guaranteed solo. Not that this is a solo build. I'm just saying that if you're not near a teammate to give you the flanking bonus, then you don't uh, normally have sneak attack damage. This is a good way to guarantee it. Level 11, our perception, you get Arcana of Persuasion of, and use Magic Device up. From here, let's just go to Spell Specialization first. Notice, at level 11 now, there's no need to go Scorching Ray, because you're already at the max. So again, we don't have to pick that. But look at all the stuff that well, opened up. No benefit to Shout. Shield of Dawn could benefit from it if we actually picked it, because remember, uh, this one literally has a caster level requirement. Uh, certain number of rounds that it's on for one based on your caster level so it should last two rounds longer and the damage would be better because instead of being 11 it would be plus two to that so it'd be a plus 13 here that's not amazing and i'm not picking that spell but what could i pick well dragon's breath is still here i mean just because it's overkill remember 11 goes to 12d6 not 13d6 but i still would rather have it at full 12d6 damage so let's just do dragon's breath now for our uh, feet picks level 11. This is where we get uh, back to back ones. So we're going to grab Dazzling Display and the one that complements that and it is in the S's, Shatter Defenses. So now you have the ability if you have anyone that's shaken, frightened, or panicked remember we can do that with the very first hit of a Cornigan Smash as long as power attack is on and we hit them we do an intimidation check, chances are they're shaken. Now they're flat-footed for the rest of that combat round, and we just keep beating the shit out of them. So it's just easier to hit them, easier to hit them, scared, scared, scared. Single, single target only, not dreadful carnage yet. That's coming. The soonest you can grab that is 15. We're actually going to delay that to 17 to grab more stuff for our spell casting. But still, going to be a solid choice. Level 1, this should be our last pick. Yep, and we are grabbing Snowball. So I have some cool damage that I can shoot at a distance with that nice sneak attack damage that we have. Level 4, uh, after Greater Invisibility, Dragon's Breath, and Dimension Door, instead of Control Fireball, we are going to pick up Stone Skin for some protection for ourselves. And this one, again, has a touch range. While we can't reach it yet, we will have another casting at least at level 
uh, five once we unlock it. Uh, remember, we get break enchantments. Uh, that's not here yet officially. That won't show up until level 13. Uh, but we just picked up Dimension Door, of course. Keep going Magus, more Charisma, more Persuasion, more we use Magic Device. You gotta love all that. Uh, I'm going to actually put a little more in Persuasion. It needs to catch up. Well, maybe one more we use Magic Device. Because uh, this needs to get up to a 5, right? Yeah. From here, now this might be a dead zone. Notice that there's nothing in here that we're going to pick uh, that will benefit from this. Uh, this one's already maxed out. This one's already been maxed out for a couple levels now. This one's now maxed out, so it doesn't do us any good. Uh, the only stuff that would benefit could be things like Ice Storm, which we're not taking because of the duration, or something like um, Shield of Dawn. Again, if we picked it for that extra damage, because 12 would actually jump to 14, so it would be a plus 14 to the damage every round they smack you in the face. So if we grab that, that would be one to pick. We're not grabbing that. Now the question is, is what are you going to grab here? And again, on you. Appreciate Attack is a solid choice. As you know, I also like Maximize Magic. Again, we talked about it in the previous couple of videos that if you can maximize and empower something, some of these things hit like a brick shit house. This is my way of doing it cheaply, where I don't have to get the Meta Magic Rod. It's only three times a day, but man, that really does matter sometimes. And I do like that. Remember, though, we are going to have maximum charisma, and we already picked up Wand Wielder. Maybe you want Wand Mastery, so you can start slinging out some spells, because spells are precious. Having wands in your back pocket, or front pocket, so you can cast them quickly, is pretty awesome, and why not have the highest DC check on those things? It only benefits from your charisma modifier. It doesn't benefit from our spell focus, or greater spell focus, or our elemental focus, or any of that weirdness, but still a better chance for my land. I'll push this one back. I have yet to even decide if I really want it honestly, but we definitely want Maximize Magic in my opinion. While Preaching Attack is a solid pick, I can pick it last and not feel bad, and our Dexterity is pretty crap anyway, so Beam Attacks are not really my thing. That doesn't mean that it's still not useful for when you're attacking with your melee weapon to beat the shit out of somebody. But, again, on you, I'd rather have damage with my spells. Level 4 now, after Stone Skin, now we go back to grabbing ourselves Shout for some sonic damage. Again, we didn't have any up until now. So this is decent, and again, something that we can extend eventually and empower eventually. So a decent spell pick for us, and again, AoE stun, no um, spell resistance, so again, a decent spell pick. Level 13 now, we can wear heavy armor, and again, if it's the best category for us, you know we're gonna do so. Let's get perception up, persuasion up, use magic devices, now done at five. And I'm gonna put one in Arcana, how many more did that thing get? 11. Oh, wow. Nice. Keep going. Free spell pick time. I talked about this in the previous video. Remember, you know, for instance, just a, a couple honorable mentions. Battering Blast is amazing. Single target damage is pretty good. But remember, for this spell now, uh, it's at level 5, then 10, and then at 15, and then finally 20. That's when the fourth ball shows up. So every fifth level. So right now at level 13, unless we spell specialize in it, which we could do, you're only getting two bolts. We spell specialize in this one, which it won't let you do, by the way, otherwise I'd be doing this. You could get that third bolt. Notice it's not on your list, right, even with us picking it. So again, not worth picking now. I'll grab it later. We'll get it. Don't worry about it. But again, honorable mention. Of course, other stuff like... Um, Bone Shatters here on the list, and again, while we don't have any Necromancy Love, we're at level 13, so it does 13d6 of auto-guaranteed damage, obviously Reflex Save, or excuse me, Fortitude Save out of it, and again, that uh, Exhaust Slash um, uh, Fatigued Effect built into it. Nice spell, just don't want it. Why? Because we got something else in mind. What do we have in mind, class? We have Icy Prison, remember? As soon as I can grab this thing, my own paralysis spell, setting up coup de grace, paralysis, damage, and again, evocation, so we have a tiny bonus to it, but it's definitely there. Uh, I'm going to grab, at level 13, feet-wise, it's time to grab our next meta magic extend. This is our last one. Now, if you don't feel this one, the very next level, we're going to get greater spell focus evocation. So I hemmed and hawed and decided over whether it's more important to switch this out. You know, definitely evocation would benefit. You know, you would get more if your evocation spells would have another plus one to its DC check, so now it would be a solid plus two, plus three if you meta-magic them in any way. 
but I did like the extend because A gives us our buffs for extension now, and many of our other non-evocation spells could benefit from extend and get a plus one to their DC check, like grease, web, stuff of that nature. So again, the reason I went here first and then we'll go greater spell focus evocation. For our spell pick, level 13, notice that we open up things like Cone of Cold and the Fire Snake. Uh, because of that, Fire Snake is definitely a, a new spell that we're picking now. It's a fire evocation spell. And again, 15d6 of damage uh, normally based on your caster level. So we're 13d6 plus 2. So we're at maximum damage right now because we picked this. Uh, so first here, level uh, 3. I believe we're grabbing Haste first. Yes. And then we'll get slow as our last pick, leaving the fireball behind. This is the one that I said that we would grab Fire Snake first. And then while I would love to grab Acidic Spray, now I'm not. I'm going to grab Cloud Kill. It's more utility for that one. And then I'll grab Acidic Spray. And then I'll grab Cone of Cold last. So again, order and reason to the madness. we got two different damage types of, of Cold and Fire already. Why not grab Acid first too? And again, it's the best damaging spell you have on that list. Now we finally uh, got our Break Enchantment unlocked at that level. Um, and... True Seeing is available, but we won't get that until level 16. We're getting another bonus to our concentration checks now. Uh, I want to have a little more in Persuasion. Uh, from here, uh, we can repeat the process and grab... Where'd it go? Fire Snake. Now again, it would be 16, but 16d6 doesn't exist for that spell, so it's still only going to cap out at 15d6. And that's still okay. That's, that's still our best choice for what we have here. I'm fine with that. Level 2, this is our last pick here. This is going to be Mirror Image. Now, it's a little late in the build to grab it. Uh, 14 is not that late. But again, if you felt that you weren't quite tanky enough, feel free to swap it out with Acid Arrow for location for when you grab it. I still know that I like the acid damage that I liked it earlier than later. Remember, I, even with the acid from Dragon's Breath showing up about the same time that I grabbed Acid Arrow, I still felt like we needed an acid spell that's at level 2 and 3, and that's our way of getting it. And remember, with uh, Sense Vitals, that's some serious sneak attack damage as well. So that 2d4 of craptastic damage that you're seeing, remember, you can sneak attack that shit for another 2, 3d6, 5, 4d6, or 5d6 in best case scenario. Level 5, now it's time for that acidic spray, like we said. Again, a little bonus to our concentration checks. Now we're up to a solid plus five. This makes us at solid plus six now, and this is where we unlock our school power. Perception, Kana, and I'm put a couple here in Persuasion to try to get it to catch back up. Now, I go right to school power first before I forget and make sure to grab evocation so I don't have to think about it. Remember, that's not a solid plus three to our evocation spells, plus four with our DC a bonus from uh, Metamagics. So we're doing really well for ourselves for DC checks. Spell specialization. Uh, stuff's already at 15d6. Nothing here matters. There's not one thing that will benefit uh, that we're picking that will benefit from having it being level 17. So just pick something and run with it. Keep going with Fire Snake, I suppose. Um, next level, it'll change. Uh, here's our main blade. And then for our feet pick, this was our greater spell focus invocation. Let me just prove that to myself. Yep. So now we're at a solid plus four to our evocation spells. Just saying. Level five. Gonna grab ourselves Cone of Cold now. Yep. Going Magus. And remember now we have our Counter Strike ability, so teleport your happy ass right next to those caster types and watch them take attacks of opportunity after they cast their spells. Perception. Persuasion is finally up. Uh, oh, didn't catch it up. But it's pretty close. Level 16, now we unlock level 6 spells. So now you may think, oh, here's Chain of Lightning. You're not grabbing it now, so there's no point in grabbing that. Uh, you may say, okay, let's grab ourselves, where is it? The uh, Hellfire Ray, right? Again, click it, look at it first. Level 11, level 15, which we're already at, 16, and level 19. So 16 plus 2 would put us at 18. That's, that's still one level away from giving us any use of spell specializing it. So then what do we put it in, Brother Mutant? Well, that's the other spell you're going to grab this level class, Sirocco. Remember, this spell has 46 of fire damage per round, plus one per caster level. So instead of it being 16 on this side, 
it's now 18. It's not amazing, but it's extra two points of damage per round, and it lasts two more rounds because the duration is one round per caster level. So again, it's acting like it's caster level 18 force. So we at least benefit from it. Going from here, I'm grabbing level four now. Drove fire level time, level six. This is again where you're grabbing Hellfire Ray, and you're grabbing Sirocco. Again, one that you love because of the damage, one that you love because it's evocation, and of course pretty soon because it's fire damage as well. So solid picks. I mean, you see we got three fire spells at the same time. Pretty damn nice. Going Nagus. Remember now we're at capped out on our arcane weapon. And we get another free spell besides. Perception, Persuasion's capped up here, and then now we put it into Arcana. From here, level 17, now you may think we're going to grab Sirocco again. No, remember, Hellfire Ray, again, 17 plus 2 means 19. 19 was the third beam. You definitely want that third beam, I assume, right? Remember, that's 15 d6 of damage per beam, plus 5 d6 each. We talk about sense vitals, sneak attack potential per beam. So again, you want the third one. So let's grab that shit. So here you go. For here for free spell pick. Now what are we grabbing here? This is the one where we're grabbing battering blast. Why? Because again, we're at a solid three beams, balls, whatever, same thing. Um, and again, why is that important? Because remember, we didn't have much in the way of force damage up until now. We had magic missile, and that was it. We had multiple ways of increasing magic missile from one to two to three to four. Maybe even five, I don't think so. But definitely four. But that's it. Now this is a level three spell that we definitely can empower, so you know you can do it at level five. And we can uh, reach it because the range on that thing is, doesn't say it, but the range on this is like close range or medium range. So again, we can reach that spell. So three can go to four, three can go to five by empowering it, three can go all the way to six if we empower and reach it. So again, covering quite a bit of a damage potential here. This is still better. But, again, if fire damage is an issue, then you have this guy. And again, there's some utility here for knocking guys around. Knocking them prone, too. Uh, from here, our feet's at 17. This is where we grab uh, both Dreadful Carnage. And this is the one that's going to AOE scare the shit out of guys when we kill them. And that's a perfect time for us to have three beams for Hellfire Ray, in my opinion. Start off the fight strong. Beam someone in the face that's a weak little pansy. Drop him like a fly, and all his friends, including the main boss, potentially get scared of you. That's pretty sweet. Set yourself up some sneak attack loving. Then, this is our first chance now to grab our other elemental focus now, which is right here, and it's fire. Last one will be greater elemental focus fire. Level 3 pick, grabbing slow. Level 6, and by the way, we'll save. So again, useful for us because normally we're reflex with a little bit of fortitude. So any will save that you can muster is a pretty good idea. Level 6 after Sirocco, this is probably where we're grabbing our Chain Lightning. Let me prove it to myself. Yep, Chain Lightning after True Saint. Very nice. Going Magus. Perception, more Persuasion. Any other points going to our con? From here we have... Um, well, first let's do our spells pick. Um, if you want to keep that third beam, you have to invest in Hellfire Ray again. Because remember, it's at level 19. We're only at 18. So we're at level 20 now for the spell. doesn't matter. It matters in that at level 19 and above, we get three beams. So now we're still at three beams. And from here, this is your last pick. So again, are you doing Prescient Attack? Are you doing Quicken Magic? Maybe you have a lot of meta magics, and those things take a while to cast. So Quicken Magic is a solid choice. Prescient Attack is an awesome choice. Uh, again, I haven't decided that Wand Mastery isn't the best idea or the worst idea. Kind of on you on this one. I don't mind it. I'd rather have Prussian Attack. Let's just say it. I want to hit them with my beams. And since my dex is sucky, this is a better way of making sure that it can help. it can land. I still uh, maintain that Maximize Magic earlier. That was a better pick. Uh, from here, level 6, after Chain and Lightning, now we're grabbing something like Transformation. And these aren't really written in stone. It's just kind of the ones that are here just grab them and whenever order makes sense like we're going to get dragon kind one we'll get acid fog as well uh, acid fog i think i picked as a level 19 free spell pick but again on you on that stuff <sighs> greater spell combat so now we're getting another bonus to our concentration check so now we're at a full plus eight which is four higher than most everybody else just saying uh keep going magus 
perception, persuasion, and again, like I said, I had one in knowledge world, but if you don't think that that's worth a damn, it, you should have grabbed it quite frankly early on. So I'll just make this a 12 instead of an 11 by the end of the build. Uh, from here, though, now you're at full 19, so you don't need to invest in Hellfire Ray anymore, baby. It's already there. So again, what do you invest in? Well, remember, you grabbed Chain Lightning, and it's at 19d6 right now. Putting this on here doesn't take it to 21, but it will take it to 20. So now you have the best Chain Lightning you can have. That's awesome. From here, Elemental Focus, Fire. Level 5, you're going to grab yourself Baleful Polymorph, I suppose. I mean, if you're trying to solo, you can grab that Elemental Body too, but you would have grabbed it way before now. But if you're not soloing, then you're probably not on a Strength-based build. Baleful Polymorph is still fun, and again, I kind of dig it. You know, who doesn't like being the caster that turns him into a puppy? It's just it's funny. Free spell pick time, baby. Okay, let's work our way from bottom to top. So, we are grabbing uh, level 1. Your piercing scream, like I said, we would. Remember, we needed sonic damage to cover more than just 4, 5, and 6. That's what Shout does. So, your piercing scream, auto hit move, 1, 2, 3. Hell, we can get it all the way up, I think, to level 4 and maybe even level 5. That's kind of overkill, but again, we could do it. Then, going on from there, after your piercing scream, you go up to level 2, and you're going to grab yourself resist energy. Why not be able to protect yourself from your spells? Especially things like Acid Fog. Uh, resist Energy, and then we're going to grab at level 2 also a Fire Spell, Burning Heart. Remember, we didn't have Fireball here, and you probably were feeling the pinch. Remember, you had Burning Hand, and you had Empowered Burning Hands here, so you were fine for a while. Still bad, it's not nowhere near what Lightning Bolt or Fireball could do, but, you know, Dragon's Breath and Controlled Fireball was a hop, skip, and a jump away, so it's not the worst thing ever. And again, you did have Scorching Ray for some single target shit ton of fire damage. Just saying, you weren't feeling too bad about grabbing this late. Uh, from there, after Burning Arc, we're grabbing level 4 spell. Auto hit move that I love. You know why? Bone Shatter. Remember, the ability to do unholy damage, uh, as well as uh, solid 15d6 of damage, as well as the fatigue, even if they make their check exhausted if they fail it. Really, really nice spell. And again, you have the ability to empower it and reach it. So, pretty sweet. Uh, level 6 now for the last two. Acid Fog, I said I get. Now, normally I would say you don't grab a spell that you can get as you level up. But let me show you the spell that we're also going to get at level 20, and it's level 6. That's still missing. You didn't get Dragon Kind. And if you're a strength based build, I maintain that Dragon Kind 1 at least is still a, a good idea. You turn into a stronger form. It's a size, or sorry, not even a size bonus. It says it's a size bonus in the tooltip. It's not. It is actually a um, polymorph bonus. So it stacks with the size bonus of a large person. It stacks with your belt of uh, plus eight strength, let's say. So again, you will increase your strength yet again. You will increase your constitution yet again. You get some natural armor. Yes, your armor falls off you, but chances are by now you're casting spells and buffing yourself up with your team's help. Immunity to difficult terrain is nice, the breath weapon is nice, resistance to whatever element we get for whatever type of dragon I pick is nice. Five different attacks around, they may not be amazing damage, but power attack still works on them, sense vital still works on them, and again, you can be casting spells in this form, so greater invis is still a viable option too. So again, lots of reason to like dragon kind one. We'll pick it up at 20, so it's late, but again, I wanted Aston Fog earlier, like I said before in the previous build or videos. I miss having this acid damage. It really did. And as much as I love having Dragon's Breath at level 4 and 6, the empowered version, it's still, sometimes it's just nice to stand in the cloud and just let it do the damage to the bad guys. Or just trap them in a corner with like a web spell cast this on them and watch them melt their flesh off. Super fun. And then the last pick is our fire spell. That's not an evocation. Tar pool. Now, it, you'll notice I did not grab Obsidian Flow. Why? Because we had a crap ton of fire damage already at this, already in this level. And Obsidian Flow, while it was useful, same damage as Controlled Fireball. And of course, had the equivalent of a web spell if you get them because it's entangled. So it's nice. If I could get it instead of Controlled Fireball, I would have. But since we're clearly grabbing Controlled Fireball, it was kind of redundant. It's not it, that it's the same, there is differences. But again, this is a better DC check. Uh, I could cast this as simply cast a web spell down on the ground to lock him in place and then hit him with the controlled fireball and it's almost the same effect as that one spell of Obsidian Flow. Just saying. And I'd rather have the biggest version, Tar Pool, at level 6, quite frankly. So, again, on you. Uh, 
20. Got our charisma. Perception and persuasion are both max, and we managed to get instead of 11, 12 into our conics. We didn't put that one into knowledge world, and I'm cool with that. Solid, solid pick. I mean, hell, if you feel bad about that, get this one up to a nice plus five. Hey, on you. But, you know, whatever you want to put that last one, don't much matter. We don't have the best trickery, and again, it's not that you're going to be the trickery guy, but early on, if you can invest in this, this is really gives you the chance to get some cheap XP. Same with athletics, same with mobility. You're not amazing at them, but again, in that one map where you're running solo from three to five, there's a lot of different athletics, mobility, and trickery checks. Having some points invested in it is extremely useful. Perception is always solid, and again, we always make sure it's 20. Persuasion, amazingly managed to get to 20. I'm real happy about that. Part of that is because, of course, we went human. The other part is because we invested 12 points into intelligence total. So again, solid choice. Use magic devices. Still a little lackluster, but remember, you're going to pump charisma, obviously, as much as possible. So this plus 15 will actually go up more than this. And again, I'm cool with that. By the way, this plus 18 doesn't include your pet, your familiar. The minus 2 is because of our wisdom, remember? We get a perception bonus for having any familiar. So even if he's not out, we get a plus 2 to this. So it really is 20. So don't, don't feel too bad. These numbers are non-existent because we didn't unlock them. And they would be penalized, of course, from the low wisdom as well. And we don't care because we don't give a damn about those. The downside is our will's bad, minus two thanks to it, because the wisdom sucks. But again, we get a plus two thanks to our centipede, so it neuters itself out. So in the grand scheme of things, we did fine for ourselves. And I'll show you the finished numbers here when we're done. Uh, for our last spell specialization, now this is funny. So if you look at your list, remember everything's at level 20 DC. So chain lightnings are at 20 D6, so it's done. Nothing lower than that's any better uh, for instantaneous damage type stuff. For stuff that has a duration, Usually it's a solid duration, it's like one minute and it's done. If it's not, like Ice Storm, we didn't pick it. Uh, if it's uh, something like oh, Shield of Dawn, you know, it has like a one round per caster level. So it's caster level 20 right now. If I had that spell, again, if I picked this, then it would be technically 22 rounds it would last. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Um, but on that, Soroka was a solid pick because, again, it lasts for uh, like one round per caster level. The damage type on it, too, remember, it's uh, 46 plus one point per caster level. doesn't say anything about being capped out at 20. If it is, oh well, at least it lasts for two more rounds than normal. And again, that can be helpful. That can be enough to take out a bad guy, so I'll, I'll happily take it there. So your last one, you invent uh, your spell specialization in Misoroko. Spell picks. Level 4, you're going to grab yourself Phantasmal Killer, because why the hell not? Level 6. You're going to grab yourself Dragon Kind 1. And if you don't like that, here's Umbral Strike, Greater Dispel Magic, Disintegrator, Solid Choices, as you know. But I still like the Dragon Form when I'm a strength based guy. And that's the build. Now, before we get into that weirdness, let me just quickly show you our stats. Remember, we have penalties because of armor. So obviously, anything that can make those penalties go away is beneficial to you. And, and I don't mean taking the armor off. I mean having, like, Mithril plate mail, having mithril chain shirts, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, stealth is bad, and again, if we make ourselves the bigger version of ourselves, you know, with like an enlarged spell, which we didn't take, but you could have, um, remember your stealth goes down again because you're bigger, it's harder to hide. You're not a stealthy guy. It's not that we won't have greater invis on. Remember, just because they can perceive you doesn't mean they're still not flat-footed from you being invisible, right? So again, just because their perception is high enough to to penetrate the fact that you have a, a crappy greater invisibility spell on doesn't mean that they still don't you know suffer a penalty to when you're swinging they just know that you're here somewhere it's like seeing footprints roughly in the area or i heard someone fart over in the corner over there and, oh he must be invisible yeah but you can't see me swinging at your face just saying i still get sneak attack damage so again you're doing fine uh we did pretty good i think for ourselves persuasion of course alone being a solid solid choice here we did really well for our intimidation check now, as you can see. So that dreadful carnage will come in super handy. Now, I don't want to show you this build, uh, per se, uh, because I already have it already pre-made up, yeah, I think. That's why I'm going to find it. Uh, the reason for that is that I literally took the time today to make every possible permutation of meta magic, And it's important, because there's actually something I need to show you. So let's actually, well, let's first, let's just quick save it so I don't screw it up. We'll just save normal. And then I'll go and try to load, I hope it was this last one. 
if it's the right one, then we're fine because it literally has uh, every meta magic possibility. And there is a mistake I have to correct. I think this is it. Oh, yeah, it's it. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, first, let me show you what I've done, and then we'll talk about the mistake that I made that I have to correct. So, I do have to apologize to you guys. So, first off, here's all your spells one through six. Remember, you can't meta magic any of these guys. Not to say you can't use like a meta magic rod and acid splash for maximum damage of three. Why would you? But I'm just saying, you, you don't leave those tacos running. Uh, but the point is, you can't meta magic them in your book, which I think is a mistake, quite frankly. I always thought that you could make your cantrips better. That seems like a mistake to me, but whatever. Uh, point is, um, for Shocking Grass, Shield, and all these other guys, you notice that they have multiple dots on them. So again, you have more than one category. And again, I have Extend, Empower, and Reach. Now, as we level up, I would be actually making this book proper each time I get a new spell. Or each time I get a new Meta Magic. So, you'll rapidly fill it in. It won't be quite as daunting as it was for me, because this took me like a goddamn hour. But, there is Overkill. In, in so far as that you have so many at some of these levels that the book can't keep track of them all when we actually get out of it and look at our spell picks for the day which means we'll have to triage which again is fine because remember you did that excel spreadsheet didn't you or write it on a piece of paper or plan it out in your head maybe you're a super genius you know, like Sherlock Holmes I don't know but the point is is you can look at it and say oh well I have too many of these spells in here and I know I don't need all these castings of blur for instance I'll just take the one that's the extended version versus the reach version because who cares? I'm not shooting it at a distance, so I'll delete that one and keep that one. And then all the spells will shift up again, and the ones that are off the page, you know, I can get them back and actually be able to cast them proper. Same with, like, Snowball. You know, I have Empowered version, and I have the Reach and Extended version. Do I really need both? Yeah, maybe, but again, you'll decide. And that'll help you uh, get it in under control per level, and that's important. But, solid picks across the board, as you see, we have amazing number of spells. And notice as I scroll back and forth like this, you'll see instead of going to forward, it'll actually be the back page of four. You just need to go backwards again, and there's forward like normal. Go to five, and then back it up again. There you go. Go to six, back it up again. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So it's, it gets unwieldy. And again, I can only imagine how bad this would be if you had item magic. Oh, good lord. These books would be huge. So obviously you wouldn't do that. Uh, or at least you limit your, your picks for what was important and what can be just left behind. But the point is, is that my apology now, I remember when I said that when you scroll through these things that they will change in size. You see that? They change in size based on how many were there. But now watch this. That is not all my level 3 spell picks. That is not all my level 4, and that's certainly not all my level 5. Level 6 you can trust it, because again you see gaps. But again, the ones that are missing which ones are missing. It can't magically be that level 3, 4, and 5 are all the same size. So clearly something is being deleted here. We're not getting credit for it. That sucks. So what do you do? Well, like I said, we go through and decide what do you not need in this list. Go back to your book and say, do I really need to have the frigid touch that reaches versus the one that extends? Maybe I want to extend it because that staggered one round could be two rounds. That could come in handy. And it's guaranteed stagger. Just saying. If I need to get the uh, F out of H, uh, you literally can cast that on somebody, touch them on the shoulder, and it's extended. Guaranteed hit. Uh, so you look at that spell, saving throw, none. Guaranteed as long as I hit him. And he's not immune to staggered or the spell resistant kicks in. He's staggered now for not one round, two, because I extended it. So again, there might be a reason to want that. It gives me a chance to book the hell on out of there. Just saying. So you'll have to go through and decide what's necessary, which ones you can keep, and which ones you can get rid of. But I guarantee anything that's single target, hella damage, is staying on the list. So here's hell, a Scorching Ray, that's going to be amazing, and it has a farther reach. So look at the, the distance on that bastard. Here's our character. Right over here real quick so you can see the range on that. There, there's the, uh, excuse me, the reach, I keep saying extended, the reached version of that spell. Look how freaking far that is. And just to give you some frame of reference, so here it is, uh, just basically touching the stone. Okay, let's just use that as our marker. Here's the normal version. It's not amazing, but that little bit there could be enough for me to sneak into the room with sneak attack on, you know, you know the stealth on, or invisible on, you know, with sense vitals on, where this wouldn't be too close where they could sen you know, sense my presence. Where something like this, I could sneak attack with that shit. 
or again, if I'm using the, the good version of scorching ray without the increased range, that might still be far enough away that they're still not noticing my presence. They'll give me a chance to cast that spell off and boom, 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 three beams in the face, sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack. So again, th there's reasons to want that stuff. Uh, first things like reach for resist energy, really, I'll take the extended. So again, you, you can kind of triage this down. And again, once you finally get to the point where you feel like you have everything in here and you can keep track of it, just be aware that it's a six by five, if I'm not mistaken, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, so 30 spells is all you're going to get per level, which sucks, but it's what it is. And that's still fine. I mean, it, literally, if you could max them all out like that, then that'd be uh, unrealistic, because level 1 and 2 obviously aren't going to get there. But it's going to be pretty damn close. Uh, but 3, 4, 5, and 6 should all be damn near uh, 30, 30, 30, 30. So that's 120 different castings of spells should be roughly what you're seeing here. And then some. That's pretty potent, I think. Uh, so again... Don't be daunted by the, the, the fact that this is just a little bit to, to deal with. You can do it. Um, I'm not going to waste more time on that. Let's actually get inside. Uh, we'll show you, of course, our random checks. Uh, this build wasn't made in the same exact way as the last one, as far as the feet picks, but it's the same feats, just not in the right order. So with the fact that it's level 20 is fine, because it's, it's the exact All same at that play. point same spells it's just again i was still shuffling stuff around when i did this i'm like well i'm going to do this now so i can get a feel for where all my spells are at and then when i found that little flub up i'm like oh well, hell i'm gonna have to think about that now uh but here we are I didn't even buff up because i'm an idiot uh don't forget you have a pet here it's going to be familiar you don't need to have him out you have dazzling display it's not in the list but when you get it you can literally pull it out and literally pump your fist in the air waste a full round to cast it off if you must and scare a shit ton of dudes in a big hog and circle that's still fine but remember uh, before we got this one you had Cornigan Smash already you didn't need this to get Cornigan Smash and what Cornigan Smash does is what um, that's in display does AOE style so as long as I have my power attack on which I do and I hit him this once the bastard it. will have an intimidation check going off on him guaranteed <laughs> boom like that now of course because we have dreadful carnage already I'm doing the AOE explosion. But before that, you still would have intimidated that guy. Now, obviously, he's dead, so don't need to. But you would have still seen the uh, intimidate check, right? And again, the DC is based on them. Their hit dice as well as like their will or some shit calculates that out. And then um, yours is a roll and then your modifier, which is our persuasion slash intimidation check. Again, if you went... Uh, half orc remember they get a bonus to their intimidation check but it's only like two points and i was happy landing at a 30 i don't know about you and again i can get that at least at least five points higher so again we're doing fine i'm not worried about this not working and again if you follow not to give a shout out to someone who does a way better job than me at this but co carnage does an amazing job and he's done many playthroughs of different games including this one twice uh he had his group show him this is how i actually figured out the corn can smash dreadful carnage build like this was from his videos uh he or one of his crew or one of his followers turned him on to the corn can smash dreadful carnage combo and he was using it not on his main if i remember correctly on his second playthrough he was using it on valerie you know that big tower shield tank bitch and because she had a decent charisma like 13, 14, 16, something like that. She's not amazing or anything like that, but she was okay. And again, she was a fighter, so she got all the feats anyway, so it was easier for her to get. She had enough strength to make it worthwhile, too. And she was hitting and up front all the time, so it made sense for her to be the one to scare the hell out of everybody. Once she started doing it, she was doing really, really well for herself. The team was just mopping up. And if she can do it with guaranteed an intimidation check that's nowhere near 30 bonus for the modifier, we're crushing it just saying so again this guy's now uh, shaking as you can see the little weird ass uh, light tan cloud of dust or whatever on him that's the shaking effect and again risk. even though I don't have sense vitals or any other buffs on right now I still benefit from this remember it's still important to do that because again when you see the attack he's flat footed remember shaking anyone that literally is scared of me for that entire combat round is shaking uh, they're flat-footed to me. That's how we can set up sense vitals, sneak attack damage. So we're catching guys flat-footed by default. All I have to do is take out one dude and, and hope that the intimidation check, which clearly is going to work, works most often than not. That's awesome. And 
Um, if he had survived, as a matter of fact, I, did he attack me? Yeah, he attacked me because they're shaken. Uh, there's a penalty for their swing. So again, there's reasons to love it besides. So this he was out, obviously outside of the range of it, which is why it sucks for ranged attackers. But that's Let's okay. I mean, just focus way. on those guys or run faster over to them. You know, if I had expeditious retreat on, I would have been zippy across the damn floor and managed to catch that son of a bitch unaware. In due time. So I'm not worried about that. Now let's actually buff up proper this time. I don't know why the hell I have that there. Must have a there for some reason I'm putting in there. Like, oh, oh, looks like I'm missing snowball. There we go. Um, let's do the acid one just because. I think if I can show you the acid fog, I can stand in it. A trivial matter. Um, I don't need to show you everything because you guys know all the tricks by now. But just a, as a, a solid remember, I got my plus two toggle on. Let's hit him with that damn icy prison. So hit him with my solid evocation. Paralysis Reflex Save Spell 28 DC and again guaranteed I can get that 5 points higher that's a 33 DC check and it can probably go higher than that if I have some kind of cold bonus for DC checks or evocation bonus which would be a main balls I, I don't know that it exists but I know the cold one does so again I could definitely have that higher than 33 that's a solid solid spell and remember that's the normal version remember I have Not showing all of them. That's weird. There we go. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, never mind. You don't have to do it. I knew there was a trick. Ha ha ha. Okay, so if you don't see the end of the list, tab out, tab back in. There you go. Yes, we do have all our spells. I don't have to do nothing. No triage. In your face, game. Alright, anyway. Uh, my point was, uh, for level 6, remember, there's another version of this spell. Remember, we did our Excel spreadsheet for this reason, so that we can say, do we have this in multiple castings? In this case, we do. We have it either as the reach version, so range. So hover over it, see how the range changes. This is the normal range. See that? The yellow. Here's the bigger range, so obviously it shoots farther. And really nice when you really need to lock someone up before you engage in a fight to have the reach version. If we need it to last longer, we have an extended version, and both of those get a plus one to the DC check because they've been meta magic. Now remember, they take a full goddamn round to cast, but again, if you're casting from a distance and you haven't engaged in the fight, you have plenty of time. So I don't mind that. And again, so this 28 could have been a 29 is my point, and again, it could have been five points higher from that 29 to be a 34. A solid, solid spell. Uh, from there... Oh, Let's just do a shout spell. Sure, why not? Fear me! Alright, there's my shout. Saving throw 27. He was shaken, so again, a penalty to his saves. So again, another beautiful thing for us. Scare the bastards in mass, then attack with your spells like crazy. It just sets itself up for a lot of failure for them. Really, really nice for us. So that's like a plus two as far as I'm concerned to my DC check. That's amazing. Uh, I almost forgot that that actually happened. It should be. Um, I don't have to show you, like I said, I don't have to show you everything. But you remember the fact that you have multiple castings of things. Uh, at any given situation when you're in, enter a room with your team or a dungeon, whatever. And you enter a room and you're like, oh, geez, this is going to be a big fight. Uh, I'll, I'll go fall back on my staple of using... You know, Sirocco is an amazing spell for a reason. Well, yeah, but would that have killed everyone in the room and you wouldn't have to be standing there behind this stupid-ass cloud of... You know, if that's good enough, use it. I mean, hell, if, if a controlled fireball with a decent DC check on it that's empowered will do enough damage to wipe them all out, why would you stand behind that cloud of stupidness? And your teammates are idiots. They love to walk into that shit, so why risk it? So again... 
assess the situation, decide what is the best course of action. You'll get it wrong. You'll get it right a lot of times. In many ways, there's no wrong answer. This will kill them. That will kill them. Controlled Fireball will kill them. Dragon's Breath and Shout. Well, maybe not Shout, but Dragon's Breath version will kill them. Uh, where's Dragon's Breath? There you go. Uh, Chain of Lightning will kill them. So, again, you have options is my point. So don't feel like you have to keep using the same tool over and over again. If it works, hey, it ain't broke, don't fix it. But when you get to that point where you hit that brick in the wall where it's just like, holy shit, I, these guys are all resistant to my Sirocco. No one's getting exhausted or tired even, and they're all walking right through it. What do I do? Go back to your earlier spells. Oh, I can web them up, maybe. That'll slow them down. Keep them in the Sirocco long enough for the Sirocco to fire off maybe a second time. That's all, that's all you need. You know, They fail it once, they pass it once, you know. If they fail it on that second attempt, hey, it did what it needed to do. That's what I'm saying. So again, whip spell was a solid staple move. Grease less so, but still solid. It's just you know the AOE is not as big. But if you can, you know, like I said, pinching in a door where they have no choice but to funnel through it. Again, have that there like this, and then have the Sirocco there like that as they walk through your Sirocco and just power through it. Once they hit that grease spot. You know, they're making fortitude save, fortitude save, fortitude save like champs, right? Maybe they're big, giant-ass trolls. I've had that problem. They hit that grease patch. Well, that's a reflex save, baby. What's the chances they're nimble little bastards? Kind of down it. So they slippy slide on that shit, boom, fall down, and now they're trapped in the Sirocco for another round or two or more. And eventually they're going to fail something. Just saying. So, and remember, in a, in a, since we're Fire Evoker, this is our best spell for, for DC check. Uh... Tarpool's solid, it's, just, it's uh, four lower than this one because it's not an evocation spell, and this one's solid, it's two lower than this one because it's not fire, it's electric. Uh, from there, Dragon's Breath is close, if it's the fire version, it's close, it's only going to be one lower. Why? Because it's empowered, so meta magic applies. It's a level four spell, plus one from the meta magic. So it's being treated like a level 5 spell, even though it's a level 6 casting. So it's just one behind. So again, still a solid, solid hit if it's the fire version. Again, you will love those. Same with the uh, controlled fireball, too. It's a level 4 spell that's empowered. So it's being treated like a level 5 spell, thanks to our arcane bloodline background. You're going to have many, many, many things get hit with fire spells. And love it. And again, when it's immune to fire, we have solutions. We got electric. We got force. We got... Uh, a single target acid damage that we can sneak attack with. We get, and not even counting this crappy version. You know, it is crappy, but remember, 5d6 added to that for sneak attack, that's still pretty damn pimp. Cold damage is the same. Uh, positive energy the same if it's obviously undead. We have AoE fire damage at level 2. It's not amazing, but we specialized in that shit early on, right? So 2d4 jumped up to 4d4 real quick. And minimum 4 sucks. But when you hit that maximum sometime and you get lucky, that early level, at level 2, think about doing 16 points of damage to two or more dudes with the casting of a spell. Just saying, that shit's pretty funny. So, and again, we get a bonus to the DC check, even at level 1, because, well, level 2, we get it. Because, again, we have spell focus evocation at level 1. It's not amazing, I'll grant you, but we'll build into it slowly. It's a nice, slow burn, part of the pun. Into Definite the solid build. You guys are going to like this guy, I think. Again, n not married to the idea, you know, it can be easily adapted to deck space build. And again, I honestly maintain that was beautiful. I, I maintain that the deck space build uh, would be easier to solo. I'm not saying that it could solo from start to finish, but I'd give it a try. Um, you have plenty of spells, as you see, and especially when you start getting into more than one meta magic and start opening up level 3, 4, and 5 spells, you start getting a very large spell book very, very quickly. That's some good news. Um, so you have a lot of potential, a lot of options. Again, as so long as you know Follow what you're buffing, when you're buffing it with your meta magics, so that you know, uh, just so I can switch to it, so you can know how many cold spells you have at one, two, three, and on up. Do you always have something that you can use? Remember, you're the MacGyver Batman of the magic world. You have a tool for every occasion. Do I have another expeditious retreat? You better believe I have the extended version of that shit, and it's personal. Uh, uh, distance wise so I can't reach it just like shield spell that's okay that's why we grabbed extend uh, and for the ones that we can buff like uh, where is it at mirror image not only can you extend that it's personal you can extend it so it's there at level 2 level 3 as the extended version where is it at frightening shrinky dinky like 
right here. The extended version is there. So I have two different castings of mirror image. Oh wait, there's more. I also have it at level four. Why do I have it at level four? Because you can empower that shit. Now eventually you'll out level the usefulness of that because you will already hit guaranteed eight images. That's the maximum. So you don't have to empower it. But the point is still the same. If I need that to tank, if I'm just doing more damage with my weapon because I'm just a weapon wielding son of a bitch with my scimitar and I'm down to like my last level four spell, I can either do some AoE damage, some instant damage. Maybe I'd just rather have mirror image on myself again. I don't care that I'm not benefiting from it being empowered. I care that I have mirror image on myself and it's the last spell I have. Well, here you go, baby. So again, think ahead of time, pause the game a lot. This build, in my opinion, would be an amazing build. And of course the deck space version too. An amazing build to take into this game if you got the mod and you went the the turn base combat because it gives you time to think you can pause it, it automatically pauses you just take your turn think about what you're doing and attack and you don't have the cluster pile that is this game where you literally everyone's attacking at the same damn time really and it just gets weird you, you lose a lot in my opinion doing it the normal way in the, the turn base combat is where it's at and, and again it feels like it should it's the old D&D &D system or, or Pathfinder excuse me it's the old Pathfinder system of you know you have to have uh, initiate. Uh, I was going to say initiation. Initiative roll, and everyone takes their turn based on that initiative. You got your movement. You have your attack uh, round or, or, or this is not possible. Not round. That is not word? far. Uh, your attack action. <laughs> what a uh, You have all that stuff going for you. So you literally move, you double move, or you move and it then you attack. Finished. You move, you cast a spell. You retreat, you cast a spell. You retreat, you take out your bow. You again, having the turn-based combat is extremely useful for people that are new to this game matter. and still want to enjoy it, I think you'd probably enjoy it more than the actual uh, release version, which is what I'm playing right now. Uh, I'm not going to show you everything else because, again, you already know how this stuff works. But um, solid build, plenty of options. You guys will enjoy it. Again, you don't have to go, just as a final reminder, you don't have to go scimitar. I did. doesn't mean you have to. If you like the rapiers because you know what they're going to be and where they drop, hey, man, do that thing. As long as it's a weapon you're skilled in. You know, something that you're not locked away from, like a bastard sword or like dueling sword or something that you haven't unlocked. If you can pick it up and you can wield it, then you can wield it fine because you're a strength-based character. It's why I like the strength-based characters. I can do daggers. I can do short sword. They may not be amazing, but there's plenty of really good ones in the game. And again, I'm fine with that. I'll still wield it and do hella damage. You know, I'm doing decent. Downside is that we didn't get Arcane Strike. Can't be helped. You know, I mean, I, I still maintain that spell specialization was worth losing Arcane Strike. Now, I mean, you may, may differ on that. Plus five damage per swing. That's a lot of extra damage, dude. Just saying, you hit three times in a row, that's 15 damage that we lost out on. So I, I, I'll feel it. But again, we're buffing our weapon like normal. We're getting the best possible weapon for your main character, because why wouldn't you? And again, you have buffs, best gear, best armor, best everything you can think of, best wands, best staves on that. Let's In actually leave time. just to show you something. I, I sadly, can't afford it, but I wanted to show it to you. It's pure dumb luck that on this build, the damn, uh, I think it was on this one, the guy outside was selling uh, a really pimp-ass quarterstaff called The Call. I think is what it was literally called. It's like amazingly pricey quarterstaff, but it has built-in spells, and uh, one of the spells is an, uh, not an auto spell, but an infinite spell. You can use it every combat round if you so choose, which I thought was awesome. So these are the kind of staffs that I would invest in. But let's get rid of that. You take my hooch. Let's show you that staff. I hope it was this one. Yeah, there it is. Look at this shit. It is a plus four monk weapon, because all quarter staffs are, but that's still fine. And it's two-hander, so again, for a quarter staff wielding bastard like you are, two-handed with power attack on, remember, your damage for strength goes up 50% with a two-handed weapon. So instead of doing the plus three that I'm doing with my 16 strength, it goes up to 4.5, obviously rounded down. So I'm doing plus four damage with this quarter staff compared to my scimitar, doing plus three. It's not amazing, I'll grant you, but it, we didn't catch the natural break. However, remember, I'm at a plus three for my strength bonus. The best I can get is another ten points. That's another five bonus to my strength bonus. So plus three and plus five would be plus eight. So a plus eight damage for a scimitar, or another one-handed weapon, for the same quarterstaff now, uh, 
because it's two-hander, instead of it being plus eight for damage, it would jump up to 50% more to being plus 12. That's four more points of damage per smack, making it a lot better than you think. Then throw in power attack. Remember, he gets another bonus for power attack, too, by 50% more. So what normally is a, was a minus four at our highest casting level, or sorry, a base attack bonus level, uh, I think we're at a minus four to our uh, swing, which means a plus eight to our damage. Now, we have that on a normal one-handed weapon because it's a two-handed weapon. Instead of it being two bonus damage per minus one penalty to your swing, it's three bonus damage to every minus one penalty. So when minus four, you times it by three and give that to you in plus. So minus four times three is 12. So 12 extra damage from, from power attack being on. So again, 12 from power attack being on, 12 from our strength being super high and it being a two-handed weapon. So we're doing an extra 24 points of damage with this thing, my quote-unquote best case scenario. And that's before you take into the effect of the 1d6 damage that the staff does. And of course the fact that it's a plus four weapon. And then of course we buff it with Bane. You get the idea. So you can swing this thing for a shit ton of damage. So just because it's not a one-hander and you can't cast spells like you want to, you know, your spells like you want to with this thing in your hand, it doesn't mean you don't want it in your one of your force uh, weapon choices. Notice the spell has the cast summon monster twice a day for 15 rounds. So summon monster 8, no less. That's freaking awesome. That's useful. And again, it sounds like it's any version, so it doesn't uh, remember you get three versions of these higher summon monster spells. There's one where you summon one monster, summon 1d3 monsters, or the 1d4 plus 1 monsters, right? So that's pretty awesome. And this is the best part. Glitter Dust spell at will, which means infinite castings. I can cast this every round if I want to. And remember, you have Wand Wielder in this build, which is also Staff Wielder. This is what this means. I can cast this spell and still attack, attack, attack like normal. Same with the Summon Monster spell. I can cast it like normal and still attack, attack, attack and not miss a beat because of Wand Wielder feet. That's pretty cool and there's more staffs that are different than this obviously but have spells built into them that's why wand wielder is awesome for this build in my opinion i'm not going to specialize in quarter staff you could have but i'm not gonna because that's just weird uh i will uh point out of course your kukris are still a solid pick the damage is lackluster the crit range is there but so is scimitar so is rapier and again those three are your staples for any magi build uh, not counting the ranger one um for the because of the highest crit range possible that still doesn't mean you can't have some fun with a solid um oh, where are they at short sword it doesn't have the best crit range but they're still pretty good weapons solid damage there's a lot of good ones in the game hell even uh punching daggers and my favorite just the straight up daggers in the game you know it has a decent range it's not the best it's not the worst it's not like monk weapons where it's only a 20 but there's plenty of really good daggers in the game. There's a couple out there, especially for you deck space characters. There's a good dagger out there that gives you like plus three to your dodge just for having it equipped in your hand. That's three more armor class just from having your weapon that you wanted to use anyway in your little fissies. Just saying, that shit's fun. Yeah, it's metagaming when you already know what's out there, but yeah, screw that shit. This game is hard enough. I don't mind. And again, I think you guys will like it. So uh, that's all I really wanted to show you. I mean, remember to grab your best intelligence wisdom charisma gear if there's a tiara of just charisma plus six versus this you would have to make the decision but i'd probably keep both on my character i'd probably put the plus six charisma on i'd rather have more spells and higher dc checks but you know maybe you find the bonus to your intelligence uh, skill saves or skill checks to be useful maybe you like the extra bonus to your wisdom because it increases your will saves again i'm not going to tell you not to wear this but obviously you keep it on or something with the equivalent charisma or higher at all times because if you take it off to put on the other tiara of you know, I don't know casting a spell like lightning bolt every five seconds that's awesome tiara to have but if it took your charisma down you lost DC checks and you lost spells a day so if you already had all your spells you just lost a shit ton of spells today well not a lot but several and it's annoying so again that's why I always try to keep this thing on or something similar the belt one, which I don't think he has, but he has general belt. The belt that's the dex, con, and strength, obviously that's the one you want, the plus eight. But if you need to take it off before a fight because you have a belt that will cast stone skin on you, I know there's one like that exists, feel free to have both in your kitty. 
put on the one for stone skin, cast this on you, and then swap it back out for the one for the strength con and dex. It doesn't penalize you. Just make sure to do it before the fight because you can't swap out gear once the fight has begun. So again, just know that shit. You guys will be fine. It's a solid, solid this build. This is, is the last one, like I said, that I'll make. I'll still do the Arcane Bloodline for an Illusionist build just because I want to show you what it can really do. And I'll have to take a couple days to think about it, guys, because quite frankly, there's a lot to think about. Um, you, know, you don't get, and I know this is dipping off topic, but for that video, um, you don't get but like two Illusion spells as you level up. All the other ones that we're going to get, we have to pick with our free spell picks. And that's fine. I don't mind that. I, that's why I'm doing it. But you can make a solid illusion build, in my opinion. Have fun with it. It'll be teammate friendly. Do you know? Check all the boxes. You know, it'll do damage. It'll debuff. It'll buff. It'll help the team. You'll be a solid team leader. You'll do everything you need to do with it, and it'll be a completely different feel than the fire starter build that I have here for you guys. But with that, my name's Brother Me. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, share this with your friends. Tell me where you think I went wrong. What would you do different? Would you go cold evocation? Maybe you would go fire transmutation. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.